Hello girls and welcome to the cutest room in our house right now. This is Baby Minnie's nursery which is really starting to come together. There is still stuff everywhere like an explosion but it is looking so cute. Oh, we're gonna do a nursery reveal video in a few weeks and I can hardly wait. Today we're gonna be answering one of your questions, which is how do you stay emotionally pure in a dating relationship? So today I'm gonna to share three tips with you for staying emotionally pure, but first we have to define what emotional purity actually is. In my mind, emotional purity means that you see your boyfriend as your boyfriend, not as your husband. I'm not forming too deep of a soul connection with him like I would in marriage saying, I'm all in, I'm all yours when we're just dating. So that's what I think emotional purity is. Now I do want to clarify that some people want to emotional purity because in their mind what they're thinking is not emotional purity, it's like having a wall and a guard up so that you don't get hurt. And the thing is with dating and with close friendships, you, it, there is a risk involved. You're putting yourself, your heart out there, you're being vulnerable, and there is the risk of being hurt or having your heart broken. And I don't think there's a way around that. Just because you're emotionally pure does not mean that it won't hurt or that you won't be disappointed if the relationship doesn't work out. So I just want to clarify that. Emotional purity is not about having a wall up so you don't get hurt. It's about keeping the relationship in your mind and in your heart what it is in reality and not seeing your boyfriend as a husband when he's just your boyfriend. So how can you stay emotionally pure in a relationship? I want to share three tips with you today that I think are really helpful and maybe they can help you too. And comment below any tips you would add. So tip number one is keep your life in balance. And I've got three ways you can do this. First way, stay close with your friends. We all know those girls and I have been one of those girls who she gets in a relationship and all of a sudden her friends are like, have you seen Tiffany lately? Like, I don't know where she's been at. Oh right, she's dating that new guy and she's only always with him and never sees her friends. So don't be that girl. That's dangerous. That means that your relationship is starting to fall out of balance. Now that doesn't mean you have to stay friends with every single acquaintance you've ever had, but it does mean that your real close friends, the people you trust that you've invested in, you need to make time for them and prioritize them. Don't just spend every minute with your boyfriend, but also make time for those friendships. Another part of keeping your life in balance is continuing to do things that you enjoy. So if you really enjoy sports or if you really enjoy music or the certain ministry you're doing, that you're still making time for it, that your boyfriend is not taking over your whole world, especially in the first few months. And there might be some things that you need to step back from. If you're a really busy person, you're like, I don't even have time to see my boyfriend. Then yeah, it might be time to cut some things out of your schedule so you have time to invest in him too, especially if the relationship is getting serious. However, he shouldn't just become your entire world. You should still be doing things that you love to do. And you should still have those outlets. James and I still have those outlets and we're married. And part number three is to make sure that your boyfriend is not your only outlet for emotional support. So you're not getting all your emotional needs met in your boyfriend. And this is true even in marriage. You can't have all your emotional needs met in one person because they're human. We need other people. We need friendships. We need mentors. We need a relationship with God. And so making sure you have all those outlets so you're not putting all your emotional needs on your boyfriend. So all that to say, keep your life in balance. Number two, be aware of your daydreams. We all daydream, at least I think we all daydream, and I hope I'm not the only one, but um, it's really easy in our thought life to make our relationship far bigger than it is, or far more serious than it is. And so just be aware of that. It can be normal to daydream and think like, I wonder what it would be like if we were to get married. And to some extent that can be helpful to think through it, but if you're daydreaming about that too much, especially in the early phases of a dating relationship, it's gonna make the relationship far more serious in your mind, in your emotions, and heart than it is in reality. And I think that that kind of sets yourself up to start seeing your boyfriend as more of a husband rather than as your boyfriend. And the third point is let your relationship grow more slowly. Not that it has to be a certain length of time, but it's really easy to go in the space of even a week from I just met this person to this is my soulmate. And I think that it's so important to let your relationship grow slowly in its own time and place without rushing it. 
And so that means not having conversations about, um, are you the one for me? Are we gonna get married? What would life look like if we were married? I would not recommend those conversations until at least a few months into your relationship, certainly not the first couple weeks. Give your relationship time to grow, space to grow, get to know each other, just see if you like him as a person, just see if you're good together as, as a couple before you jump into, let's talk about marriage. Along the same lines is, you don't need to open the deepest secrets of your heart to him in the first couple weeks. You need to see first if he earns your trust. Just like with friendships, it's so easy to want, you click with someone, you just want to like spill your guts to them. And there might be times when that's appropriate, but I think a lot of the time that creates a false sense of intimacy where you suddenly feel a lot closer to the person than you actually are because you haven't gotten to know them yet. You haven't gotten to know if they're trustworthy. And if you've been friends before you started dating, this might be a lot different for you. But if you're just getting to know the person, give it space, give it time. Don't spill too much at the very beginning, but let yourself grow into the relationship. There's no rush. Just kind of take it slow, let it go at its own space. And in closing, if you find that you're always taking relationships too far too fast, making them too serious in your mind right away, I would just kind of reflect on that a little bit. Ask God, like, where's that coming from? Maybe talk with some older, wiser people who you trust and just ask, like, what's causing that in my heart because that could be a sign that there's something deeper going on inside you that maybe you need to work through with God and with people who you trust. So girls, I hope that that can really help. These are my thoughts on that topic. Comment your thoughts down below as well. I love you girls and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye.